This week, conflict zone is in Tallinn, the capital of Estonia. Our guest is Prime Minister Tavi Reivas, who says NATO needs to do more to deter Russia. But is that a call his Western allies will answer? Kairi Rebas, uh, welcome to Conflict Zone. Uh, the Brexit vote is being viewed as a disaster for the European Union. To what extent is it a disaster for your country? Well, as all others, uh, we are also, of course, uh, disappointed by this decision, but uh, we definitely uh, accept it as it is. Uh, there is no other choice. It has been a democratic uh, a choice by the British people. And uh, now, of course, we need to look for the future. What, what are the so? Let's talk about the steps. future. Let's talk about the future. Is the Brexit a threat to the very future of your country? Well, not more than any other EU country, but uh, but of course, uh, if we look at the British role in, in EU, it has been significant and, and uh, it still is today significant. Of course, they are still members, but uh, they have been. Looking from Estonian perspective, they have been like-minded in issues like um, economic development. They have been very much uh, pro-trade, just like Estonians. They have been very much uh, pro-single market, just like Estonians. But also, of course, um, their views on um, uh, geopolitics are very similar to so the Estonian views. So if this views. is as important, what is the threat for the future of Europe. You are a member of the European Union. But what are you thinking when you are thinking about the Brexit and the consequences of uh, the invention of the European Union, the reality? Well, I don't expect the uh, European Union to uh, be destroyed by these developments, uh, or, or uh, I, I don't see those kind of apocalyptic uh, scenarios as, as some uh, think uh, should be now uh, following. I think simply that EU will be well, somewhat smaller because uh, an essential part of Europe uh, has said that they no longer want to be part of it. Of course, um, there is huge difference whether uh, UK will remain uh, as a close friend, as a close partner, as a close ally, or will there be ideas that the UK should be taken uh, further away and there should be and This sounds wars. very diplomatic. That's your duty being a prime minister. But the reality is that the Brexit symbolized something which is um, more or less a daily experience also in other countries. We have a nationalism, which is increasing. We have uh, de-democratization, which is increasing. Example, Poland. What changes are absolutely necessary from your point of view if the European Union would have a future and is going to survive? Well, first of all, uh, I think it would be wrong to blame EU for the choice that Brits have made. Uh, I think it, that was their choice. They chose this way. Fine, we will uh, have no choice than, than to accept it and to live with it. But of course, uh, EU leaders, uh, despite the country, should always, uh, not only because of this current developments, but, but it should always uh, look very closely uh, at, at the developments with populist parties. Uh, we all know that uh, populism can take us to, to consequences that nobody actually wishes. And, and I think um, it's um, not very incorrect to say that, that Brexit is uh, one of those uh, cases where a big part of uh, the people uh, voting uh, to exit uh, EU were actually following uh, the, the promises or, or uh, slogans of, of rather populist politicians and, and the, the messages uh, they were given were, as we see now, proven wrong. Um, so how quickly should the UK leave the European Union? Well, um, David Cameron made it very clear that he will not uh, be the Prime Minister to post this notification for In divorce. In September the party will have exactly. elected uh, Hopefully another so. one. Hopefully how so. quickly? Well, um, of course, uh, too long delays uh, will keep this period of uncertainty, uncertainty uh, in the air. But, but I think that uh, it would be wrong for European Union to push Britain away by saying that, you know, you should post the 
notification very soon. You, you should not think over what are the It's exact very understandable criterias. what you are telling me now. Very well, understandable. Not necessarily so, for all. So, no, it's understandable. We, uh, you are saying the UK has not to be pushed. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is one perspective. The other one is how long uh, the UK can play this game in which a vacuum is not starting only for one side, but also for all the other countries in Europe, the economy in Europe, and the European Union by itself. So, um, what would you say uh, would be the time where time is running out? Well, uh, as I'm not in a position to set the date for the next no, but British from, from government, but, but what I can say is that once the next government in the UK is in office, they should uh, take this as their uh, first priority in a way to make sure that they have a clear view what will happen next, what is the British position, uh, what kind of union with the EU would Britain uh, like to have. Uh, of course, uh, as I said, delay is not a good thing, but, but uh, pushing the new British government to do things in their first days in office that they perhaps are not ready to do yet uh, would be wrong. I think uh, we should give them enough time to come with a proposal that is uh, in the interest of, of British people and of course uh, as good as possible for EU as well. Um, is this going to boost uh, your skeptics um, across Europe or bring EU leaders more focus on explaining what Europe means? Explaining what Europe means is always necessary. Estonia has an experience of, uh, of governments uh, always explaining why we need to do one or another thing. Uh, no government in Estonia throughout the 12 years we, where we have been uh, members of EU, even more than 12 years for now, uh, no government during that time has blamed Brussels for things that we actually have decided uh, together. Are other governments doing that? Uh, sometimes, and, and I think it is uh, the easy path to take. It's the more popular path to take to say that, you know, those guys in Brussels, they decided these awful institutions or, or whatever. So the, negative that has image, happened in history. so the negative image of the European Union is due to the politic of uh, the member states and of the governments who are saying we are not responsible, Brussels is responsible without telling the people that Brussels are the 28 exactly. Exactly. member states. I think uh, it is very important to know that Brussels uh, are the 28 member states who take the decisions uh, together and not always the decisions are popular. I mean, Europe has to deal with a lot of crises, but if we look at the um, crises one by one, we can find very easily that none of those crises are actually existentially EU crisis, but they are solved by EU. And, and uh, if, if uh, those frontline countries were hit by this uh, uh, crisis alone, without the EU crisis solving uh, ability, they would be hit much harder. So this is why we need to explain uh, uh, how things work and why we are doing this and what would be the consequences so when let, we are not try, doing that. Let's try to invent uh, the European Union in a few years. There is a discussion due to um, the decision of, of uh, Great Britain. Um, one side is saying um, we need more uh, power in the European Union, we need more power uh, in the institutions, and the other side is saying, no, this is now a moment where we need less. We have to uh, return to the decision of the national states. What is your opinion on that? Well, I think uh, pushing the gas pedal on, on uh, taking Europe uh, very federal right now would uh, perhaps give um, negative signals for some of those countries who, who are more skeptic about it. Uh, but what I do think what you should do is, is to go further with the plans we already have. Uh, there are things uh, that we should you know, take to the next level, including the single market, that in theory we have for 500 a million people. Without Britain that will be 450 million or so. But uh, in practice we still know that uh, if I want to watch my favorite uh, TV show in Berlin with my iPad, uh, I can have the internet connection very easily, but there might be job blocking saying that you don't have enough uh, rights to see this Estonian TV this show in Berlin. This is a very Berlin. important issue, but let's talk really about principles. Um, 
Mr. Schulz, the president of the parliament, said, we need now a government which is elected by the European Parliament. We need reforms which are really bringing the future also as, as an idea. We can't continue to discuss only roaming uh, questions and others. Do you agree that uh, the story of Europe needs a new uh, input? Uh, I think that uh, we have clearly 28 uh, government leaders around the table who have been all democratically elected. I don't think that... We uh, speak about the European Union, about yes, the but, uh, Parliament of Europe, the European Union. Yeah. There are commissioners, I mean. Sure, surely, but, but uh, of course it would be positive to have the uh, EU commissioners all doing like, like we had in, in Estonia, that uh, the person applying for um, EU Commission uh, post that was decided by the Estonian government to, to nominate him for, for Jean-Claude Juncker. But he uh, took a mandate uh, from the people by, by running to the European Parliament. He got a very, very good result. But you are Prime Minister the... elected by your Parliament. The same idea could, should be also in Strasbourg and Brussels. I mean, we are talking about the European Union mm. Are dedicated with democratic standards. So, um, is the idea of uh, Mr. Schulz that it's time that the Parliament is electing an own government? Is this idea um, I, I'm not a science sure fiction if this idea? Is, I, I'm not sure if this is the uh, main issue. Actually, so what should, is the main issue? Uh, from the main your issue point is, of view? is to talk about uh, the future of Europe, not the future of, of European structures. So, what is, there is the a big main difference. issue to talk about uh, the future of Europe? Uh, what is first. It? Uh, better functioning uh, single market, second, more free trade. Uh, you know, people uh, uh, in Munich uh, still need to pay 10% uh, uh, tax, uh, customs tax for their uh, X uh, series BMWs, or people living in, in Stuttgart need to pay 10% duty uh, tax. Uh, for their um, uh, GLS uh, or, or ML uh, uh, Mercedes. So how come this is uh, in the interest of, of German people? Or, or how, how is... May I ask you something? Listening to you, uh, I feel that the European Union is um, principally an economic um, idea. I thought that in the 21st century, it's also a question of democracy, of values, Uh, so what's about that? Well, I have only mentioned two things, why, what we should uh, take further. I think in terms of uh, common values, uh, also as a peace project, the EU has been a tremendous success. Uh, if we look at uh, the unity of 28, if we look at the, um, how often uh, the leaders of, of EU countries discuss all kinds of matter, including security, which is... Uh, not self-evident in today's Europe. Uh, we see one European country uh, being um, recently, two years ago, uh, partly occupied. We still see, you know, we have seen, during this year, we have seen more than 200 casualties by Ukrainian forces. But, but you know, these kind of things are not self-evident. Thus, the role of European Union as, Union as, as a Uh, security providing institution is, is also huge. Okay, so let's talk about this issue. Before the Brexit vote, Donald Tusk said to the uh, EU's external enemies, we'll be opening champagne if Britain votes to leave. Do you think Vladimir Putin cracking the champagne? Well, I'm not certain of his uh, drinking habits and, and how... Uh, Perhaps it was vodka, yeah, but you know what but, is the metaphor. Of course, yeah. but I think Uh, it's quite clear that uh, 23rd of, of June um, uh, referendum results were positive, uh, positively taken by those people who think that Europe should be fundamentally weak. I, I, of course, uh, that was a sad day for those who are uh, true believers in European unity and a good day for those who position themselves uh, as our opponents or, or perhaps even enemies. So uh, certainly so, there is uh, some logic behind that uh, thought that Tom you, just said. You um, mentioned it. Um, are you really worried about military aggression from the Russians, like in Ukraine? Well, in Ukraine, the military aggression is, is a reality. But in, are you worried, here? as a prime minister of your country, that this could happen to your country, that the Russians could attack you? 
Well, it's, yeah, Estonia is a member of NATO, and you can't disunite the security situation of, of Estonia, Germany, UK, United States. So attacking any uh, NATO countries would be attack against all. And this is I of didn't course... ask that. I ask you if you, being the Prime Minister of Estonia, are you afraid that Russia could military intervene in your country? Is that a yeah, danger I, I, which is increasing? Well, uh, I don't think that uh, direct uh, attack against NATO is um, likely in the very near future. And we have to uh, keep uh, sending credible messages that NATO is, um, uh, in addition to the articles, in a, a, addition to the political commitments by the leaders of, of all NATO countries, also present in, okay, in all I of the I tried it last time, promised. I'm asking you, not about NATO, I'm asking you about your country. But my country is NATO. This no, is, your uh, country is a member in NATO. And but this, this is yes, NATO. But <laughs> I would have asked this also the German ch Chancellor. Do you think that there is an increasing danger that Russia would attack this country? Well, what is very important to understand is that there is not my country without NATO. My country is every bit as NATO as, as Germany. My country is every bit as NATO as US. So attacking Estonia would be attacking Germany. That's according to Article 5. Common we understood commitment. that and we talked uh, and, about it. Uh, if, if you ask that whether uh, Russia has uh, military capabilities to do so, of course they have. They have uh, lots of forces uh, very close to the Estonian border. Uh, you know, Vladimir Putin uh, saying in, in Kultaranta in, in a press conference uh, to, uh, in front of um, a Finnish president that uh, they have taken their uh, forces 1,500 kilometers from uh, Finnish border, which is very close to, to Estonian border, is of course a nonsense because I calculated, I, I looked at the map, I did a very quick calculation. Uh, there is uh, more than uh, 350,000 Russian troops uh, within the range of 1,500 kilometers from Finnish borders. So, you know, that's, that's, that's about this message. Yes. The but, NATO, um, the NATO uh, will meet this weekend in hmm. Warsaw. Uh, what are your expectations? My expectation is to send a very clear message uh, continuously that we will increase our deterrence level. That, uh, Concretely, what does it mean? That means also, in addition to the decisions already taken in Wales, uh, this means uh, a presence in, in all of its territories. Uh, just like, you know, and this is not uh, because we are preparing Do you want more, more permanent war. troops? Uh, we will have uh, more troops uh, in, in our region, that's for sure. But this is, uh, again, to make a distinction, uh, this is um, not because we are preparing war, for war. There are lots of allied uh, presence uh, in, in Germany. This is not because Germany is preparing for war. or there are Germany of... is not asking to increase the troops. Your country and other countries are yeah, asking. Says... That means you have the impression that the danger is getting higher. Well, I th th simply think that it's time to fully understand that uh, all NATO member states uh, need allied presence, uh, not only Germany, not only Italy, not only Belgium, uh, I'm not asking uh, presence at the level of, of what the presence is in, in, uh, in many of the Western countries. But we think that uh, the presence should be in all territories. This is the most credible uh, message we can send uh, to say that NATO is united, NATO is together, and you cannot uh, disunite uh, one country's uh, security from others, because but let's, let's it's, it's take, all so Let's trust. take seriously and not uh, with symbols about the question, the very high uh, readiness joint task force, which is only made up of 5,000 troops, NATO troops, would have taken seven days to get here. In 60 hours, the Russians are here, but seven days adds up to 160 hours. That means 5,000 troops reach Estonia four and a half days too late. How could that be def sufficient to defend you against the Russians? Well, first of all, uh, the estimation how, how fast uh, Russian troops can move uh, was, was yours, not mine. But, 120 uh, hours. But, uh, 
it, it's still your estimation, but I have good news. Estonia has troops as well. Estonia is one of the um, four or five countries that actually contributes uh, more than 2% to uh, national defence. We have capable uh, forces. Uh, we are ready to stand against any enemy. And of course, that said, uh, the uh, speed that our allies can, can uh, come needs to uh, be improved, it needs to be practiced, and this is all what, that we are doing. Uh, before Wales, the speed was uh, much slower. Now we have, with the WGTF, have uh, moved to next level. We still have a lot of work to do in... Uh, in uh, so that's why German Foreign Minister Frank-Walter Steinmeier recently said, quote, NATO needs to avoid saber-rattling on the eastern flank. Is he right? I think uh, the most provoking thing NATO could do in um, relations with Russia uh, would be to be weak, would be not having exercises, would be not having presence. Uh, knowing that um, Russia has a huge number of uh, troops just the uh, other side of the border, if you really know how Vladimir Putin thinks, the biggest provocation for him would be seeing that you are weak. And NATO is not weak. NATO is uh, not only uh, sending uh, units uh, to all of its countries, NATO is uh, showing also with exercises uh, that uh, it can react quickly, it can uh, stand against any enemy. And I, I'm confident that uh, this message uh, is heard very well in, in Kremlin that uh, actually there's no actual, you know, well, they, they should be completely crazy to, to pick a fight against NATO because NATO has made it very clear and will make it even more clear that uh, every bit of NATO's territory will be defended and, and uh, there but, will be a reaction yeah, against any most, attack. The most important member of NATO, America, could have in a few weeks, in a few months, a new president. Things will surely change if Donald Trump's is elected a president in the United States, he calls NATO, quote, obsolete and said, quote, maybe NATO will, will, will dissolve and that's okay, not the worst thing in the world. Are you worried about Trump perhaps being once a president? I'm confident that uh, people in the US will uh, make a smart decision. They will have a good president and, and US rule uh, in European security is critical not only for Estonia, but it's critical also for Germany, UK, France, all of us. Uh, and has been already for uh, more than 70 years. So um, in this, this respect... This doesn't mean anything. More than 70 years, Great Britain uh, fell, being Europe, was uh, for more than 50 years a member of the European Union. Things are changing. Well, glad to say that uh, UK will remain to be a member of NATO, a very important member of NATO. But uh, of course, uh, uh, the U.S. role, uh, whoever will be the president, the U.S. role uh, will remain very, very important in, in European security. But of course, that's also important that European countries uh, stick to our uh, common commitment to, to keep our um, uh, military expenditure at the agreed level. But even and that very was glad. paid. Nobody really um, fulfilled the 2% of GDP. The uh, money which is necessary is not still there. So how can you rely to an organization that does not even fulfill their own financial commitment to really bring security to a country like Estonia? 2015 was the first year after many uh, where we saw a uh, clear, clear increase in, in defense expenditure in NATO, including many of the European allies. Um, uh, well, first of all, there are uh, at least five countries in, in uh, NATO who uh, contribute more than 2% Estonia, including Estonian uh, uh, GDP, or this um, expenditure will be 2.16% this year. I'm very glad that Angela Merkel, but also Ursula von der Leyen, have been uh, very clear on, on saying that Germany has to increase uh, their military expenditure. Latvians and Lithuanians are growing may, may there, I, and I, so I, on. May, may I ask you something? Um, very shortly, do you believe that Vladimir Putin is a danger for the peace in this world? Well, that's a question you, you should ask uh, Ukrainians. You, you, you could think, get a very clear answer. I, when I will be in the yeah. Ukraine, I will ask them. 
I was talking with you. Um, by, by that, uh, do you I, think I yes made it no? very clear yes, that, make it clear. Uh, that uh, leader of a country who thinks that uh, he can change uh, borders of sovereign countries by force has done so in Ukraine, has done so in Georgia. Well, I think there's no question that uh, his aggressive behavior has made Russia a threat and uh, has uh, made all the democratic world to uh, stand united against all kinds of aggressions. Uh, that includes Ukraine, that uh, includes Georgia, and then includes sending a message that uh, even thinking about doing something similar in nature. Thank you very would be much, David Robinus. Thank you for being on Conflict Zone. Thank you.